Round Kiva temples are set deeply in the ground. The ancient architects probably took advantage of natural cavities in the earth. Here, worshippers were protected from storms and animals. Their holy temple, where shamanistic magic rituals were performed, probably looked similar to this restored kiva in Aztec, north of Chaco Canyon. The centerpiece of the room is a fireplace. Next to it are two stone tubs, whose function remains a mystery. Perhaps they served as treasure chests for religious objects. The roof is supported by four giant tree trunks. Some kiva roofs were built to be flush with the ground, while others were raised slightly above the natural terrain. Early Spanish explorers ignored Chaco Canyon and its people. A few Navajo Indians settled in this area, but even they had no relationship with the Anasazi culture. This was a region left untouched until a hundred years ago, when a cowboy discovered artifacts in Chaco Canyon. He received financial support for excavations, and a strange discovery was made. No burial grounds and few human bones were found. Was Chaco Canyon populated by pilgrims with no settled population? These scientists researched and filmed during all four seasons. Studying the role nature played in this region might help them to understand the mysterious Anasazi culture. In addition to the ruins, the Anasazi left other silent witnesses. Unusual rock paintings reveal a rich imagination. But they also raise other questions. Why did these people, who were master builders, never develop a written language or hieroglyphics, as the Mayas did in the south? Perhaps a choice was made. Written notation may have been considered a desecration of their magical culture. The flute player is a motif found all over America, from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego, the sweet tones of flutes made of wood, stone or bone traditionally express the soul's longing for eternity. Numerous depictions of animals represent the Anasazi's understanding of the connection between humans, nature and all of Earth's creatures. The explorers ask anthropologist Alfonso Ortiz, a Tawa Indian, what he knows about the Anasazi. They saw themselves as being a part of the earth. They saw themselves as belonging to the earth, not the other way around. Uh, and it's a very profound difference because uh, European man, at least by behavior, if not by creed, has behaved as if the earth belonged to, to him and, or to them. The ancient Chacoans believed otherwise. They put their lives in rapport with the earth. And that is evident everywhere, especially in their architecture, which may be their most enduring and powerful material accomplishment. The astronomical knowledge gained by the Anasazi is just as impressive. They studied the sun's movement at a fixed point on the horizon. Then, using a type of horizon calendar, the Anasazi placed important occurrences in time. Religious ceremonies, the winter solstice, sowing times and periods of harvest were all specifically dated. Anasazi who settled in the outlying areas did not rely entirely on the people of Chaco Canyon for astronomical calculations. They devised their own calendar systems. 
The village of Holly lies 125 miles north of the canyon. Here, Anasazi Indians carved three sun spirals into a very special spot. At dawn, light fell in a horizontal line. But only during the summer solstice does a bar of morning light fall directly through the three sun spirals. Another example of the Anasazi's astronomical awareness was discovered 20 years ago, high on a lone mountaintop in Chaco Canyon. Here, during the winter solstice, the midday sun forms two glowing daggers, which frame an ancient sun spiral. The separation of light is caused by rocks that stand in front of the spiral. Whether the rocks were positioned by nature or by the Anasazi is still a mystery. During the summer solstice, a single dagger slashes the center of the spiral. Scientists believe this was not merely an observation site, but rather a sacred place where tribal rituals were conducted. People may consider the Anasazi more primitive than us because of the power they entrusted in their natural surroundings. But perhaps there is great wisdom behind their deep connection to nature and their respect for the magic of life. In addition to studying the sun and star signs under open skies, the Anasazi included places for observation in their homes. A window in Pueblo Bonito, set at an odd angle, baffled archaeologists until astronomers made an interesting discovery. During the winter solstice in December, the rising sun could easily be seen through the window, saving the Anasazi an ice-cold trip to an outdoor observation point. Winter solstice neared, the window began to reveal the break of dawn. And on the exact day of the winter solstice, the sun's rays fell directly into a corner designed to catch them. of Chaco Canyon in the southwest USA is an area surrounding a mountain presently called the Sleeping Ute Indian. Here in Hoven Wep, ruins of an Anasazi Indian outpost have been preserved. Two holes the size of fists are found in the walls of one of the rooms. One opening looks toward the northwest and through it, the sun can be seen setting during the summer solstice in mid-June. The second hole faces southwest, the direction in which the evening sun sinks to the horizon in mid-December, the time of the winter solstice. Each 
winter morning brings a new dance of light and shadow to the region. The interplay of colors and shapes is truly magical.